I'm here with Justin Lacey. He's friends with Tim Kaufman, Josh Lajani, and Jared Monasmith, and kind of we got hooked up through those three guys. And Justin's lost over 200 pounds already. He started out uh, over 500 pounds and uh, is well into his journey and I think below 300 now. So maybe, Justin, you could just start with uh, where you're from, a little bit about yourself. And again, thanks so much for the time. My name's Justin Lacey. I'm from southeast Missouri. Um, little town of Dexter, Missouri, about 7,000 people, uh, not many people at all, but, uh, yeah, I've lost over 200 pounds. Loving it, man. Life's good. That's awesome. So were you, uh, were you always big, uh, you know, growing up or is this something that kind of, you know, you've gained weight through the last years? Yeah, no, uh, if you, if you see baby pictures of me, <laughs> I was a big baby. I was a big kid. I was a big toddler. I was the biggest kid in my class for the longest time. Um, yeah, I was always pretty big. And then it just, uh, you know, you'd lose a little bit, you'd gain more. You lose a little bit, it's just that, that yo-yo effect just uh, got out of hand. Yeah, and so what was your expectation of food kind of growing up? I love food. <laughs> um, but when I was younger, it was always the go-to diet. Uh, the low carb diet, you know, I would always be like, Oh, I got to eat bacon and ham to lose weight, you know? And, uh, I don't know. I think I was like 12, 13, whenever I started reading like, uh, Dr. Atkins books, you know, cause I was like, I needed to lose weight at that age, you know? So, you know, I would go on the low carb diet, lose 70 pounds and I'd gain 80. And then I'd go on the low carb diet, lose a hundred pounds gain 115, you know, and I would lose, I've lost a hundred pounds multiple times and I've always gained it back plus some. And it was just detrimental. Yeah. And then the people kind of around you in your immediate community, whether it was friends, family, um, were they overweight as well or they weren't as overweight as I was, but you know, this, this area, uh, well, kind of like any Southerners, you know, kind of like Josh Lajani's story, you know, everyone grows up hunting, fishing, barbecuing, you know, there's a lot of barbecue places in town, you know, my, me and my family, we love to barbecue. So yeah, my whole family's uh, usually been pretty big, you know, on both sides and my mother and father's side. So yeah. Okay. And then I know that you were, you were over 500 pounds. Looking back, can you kind of pinpoint some of the things that, uh, that contributed most to your weight gain? Definitely the food. Uh, I'm pretty sure the uh, food addiction factor was was a big thing. Um, I was never really active. The sedentary lifestyle, plus all the extra calories and all the just junk that I ate, it just added up over you know over time. So, you know, you just said you tried to lose the weight before and then gain back plus some what do you think is different now from then as far as is it you know is it education or are you in a different place uh mentally or emotionally i think it's a mixture of all of it i think being overweight my whole life that right there alone is like okay it's about time i start not being unhealthy you know but recently being that overweight being 500 pounds I was in a, a place where I couldn't walk. I couldn't put my shoes and socks on good. I couldn't breathe. You know, I had multiple health issues. Um, it just got to be a point of, I need to do this. I need to make a change, you know? It's just like, that was huge. And then my family had health issues. So I didn't want to be in that position of being in the hospital. But what kept me going this time, I think, is is the food, actually, the, the plant-based lifestyle. Because I was always used to going to that low-carb route, you know. Got to eat that, that bacon and that ham or whatever. But I found out that I could lose weight eating carbs. <laughs> I could eat potatoes and rice. So the energy, man, I, I, I've never had this much energy in my life. It, and now I actually have the energy to get up and not be sedentary, you know, that had a huge factor. Yeah, I think that's a common, um, that's a common conversation that I've been having with people is, you know, they, it's almost like they pick up running or they pick up cycling or all these new hobbies because yeah. now you have yeah. this energy 
You just didn't know that it existed. Um, yeah. I know that you said in, in a message to me that one of the last times you completely fell off the wagon, you'd be eating whole pizzas from Little Caesars, go to McDonald's, get four McDoubles, three McChickens, um, yeah. fries and a soda, then go somewhere else and get something else. It sounds yeah. to me like you were eating a bunch but never really full or never really satiated. Is that yeah. fair? Yeah, sometimes that was the case, you know. I think for me a big thing was convenience. You know, it, how easy is it to just drive your vehicle into a window and grab a huge bag of food for eight bucks, you know? I mean, that right there was pretty convenient, and, and it was just so pleasurable as far as, you know, McDoubles from McDonald's or fried food or whatever. It's a lot of compacted calories, and it makes you feel, you know, it all that serotonin release, you know? So I think it was a an addiction factor too. Yeah, I think if uh, if we were to go back a few hundred years and we were to give people a video of uh, of watching somebody pull into a fast food restaurant and just handing out <laughs> what would have yeah. taken them weeks or months to to get to, they'd have been pretty surprised. So you yeah. mentioned you mentioned you know it was fast, it was cheap, super pleasurable, and I think in your message you and you just said it there you know you were physically addicted to it. Do you think, mm -hmm. looking back at the time, you realized that you were addicted, or is that just something that you've come to realize now, having that that um, you know hindsight? I think it was a realization after I started this journey. I never really considered it before. I guess it was sort of a denial thing, maybe, because I mean, like, I'm not addicted to something like food. You know, come on, that's ridiculous. But looking back on it, it's just like. Well, of course I was. You know, you have people who are addicted to this drug, that drug, alcohol, whatever, and they have these symptoms or side effects, and you could physically see it, you know. Well, I was physically swollen with, with body fat, you know. that I was physically addicted to something because it made me have these side effects, obviously. So, yeah, I think it was a, a huge realization of, of a, an addiction afterwards. I think you also said that you had some medical issues. Um, can you kind of talk yeah. about that a little bit? For I don't know how long. Um, I had, uh, you know, once the weight got pretty up there, I uh, had really bad tendonitis in both my ankles, both my feet. And, um, you know, it would get inflamed all the time. You know, there'd be some days where I would just wake up and I wouldn't be able to walk because the pain would be so bad. So I'd have to either use crutches or I'd have to use like, if I didn't have crutches, I'd have to use like a chair, you know, to rest my knee on. So I'd have to limp just to go use the bathroom or go to a, another room or something. Um, so that right there was a horrible health issue, but I also had lymphedema really bad, which a lot of people say that it's not curable, but my, my left leg would get swollen to be, I mean, huge because I thought it was something like elephantitis or some crazy disease you know I didn't know but uh after you know learning about it you know it was lymphedema it was uh the lymphatic system got clogged up with something and my left leg would literally like leak this lymph fluid and it's not normal for your leg to leak water or whatever it was you know and uh that was scary but uh after doing all the research with the plant-based stuff and all this science research, you know, just in-depth, in-depth stuff, it just finally went away after lots of exercise and lots of eating right. And then, yeah, it's gone too. Like all my health stuff is gone. I also had a, another health issue with my, my right eye to where it would get just cloudy. Like half the time I couldn't see out of my right eye. It would just get so gunked up with, with stuff, and they call it eye fishing syndrome. And uh, I'm pretty sure that was due to a lot of smoking because I smoked a lot of cigarettes. And uh, I quit smoking and ate healthier, and it cleared up as well. So, yeah, all the health issues wow. gone. Um, I think you also said you had normal obese issues, which included digestion issues, hemorrhoids, exhaustion, struggling to put socks and shoes on, amongst other things. Was that something that you – were those things things that you dealt with privately or were those things that other people were aware of the fact that you struggled with them? 
Yeah, well, a lot of those things I wouldn't really be too public about, you know. But, you know, when it when it comes to digestion stuff, you know, there'd be times where I'd go four or five days a week without using the bathroom, you know, because, I mean, that's just – that's being clogged up, you know. You clog the system up, your your body's not going to work right. But but that right there was a source of a bunch of the diseases I had, all the the health problems I had, uh, hemorrhoids, the – the fatigue, you know, uh, there's probably stuff that I had wrong with me that I didn't even know about, which maybe that's a good thing. I don't know, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's a lot of bad stuff was wrong with me. Wow. Um, I think you said that your mom had a stroke, which in your words you say was scary as hell. You said, yeah. I didn't want to have some family members crying over me at a hospital because my ignorant self was being self-destructive and over what food. Did you realize before this, or was it kind of in the midst of everything that you realized you were being maybe self-destructive with your eating, and consider the you know the seriousness and the consequences of of what was going on with yourself? No, it it hit me like a truck, man. You know, because your whole life, you know, you're just a big guy, and you're just used to it. You know, you don't think about your actions putting you in a hospital the same way, you know, she didn't believe that her lifestyle was going to make her end up in a hospital with her family members surrounding her, you know, crying over it. And then I got to thinking about, you know, whenever I'd get emotional about her in the hospital, I was like, well, what if that was me? What if I was laying there and they were all upset? Or what if I would pass away because of some heart disease or, or health problem. It all because I was ignorant to the fact that I was being self-destructive, you know? And that made me upset about everything. I was like, well, why would I want to do that to myself or my family or, or my friends, you know? So, yeah, it was pretty hard-hitting. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, we're fully aware of the fact that, um, you know, eat your fruits and vegetables or, you know, eat well, but but sometimes a little bit blind, myself included, to the fact that if you're on the other side of things, that you can, in fact, be self-destructive, that you can, in fact, really kind of tear down the thing that you've been given um, in a way that, you know, is, not to say beyond repair, but but beyond what you can imagine whenever you're actually putting that food in your mouth. Um, yeah. So did you have a 180 moment where you, you know, you decided to just <coughs> kind of change everything? Um, or did... Or was that more of a, a, a gradual thing that you decided to make a change? In the message I was talking about, <clears throat> the beginning of 2015, I think I think what had a huge impact was my mom having that stroke. That was pretty big. But also the year and a half worth of me not being able to walk when I wanted to. You know, there'd be periods of like two weeks where I would not be able to walk at all. You know, I'm like come on. Like it was getting so annoying. <laughs> I was like, I just want to be able to go to the store without being in pain. I want to be able to get up and do stuff. But also in that message, I was talking about wanting to do a project, you know, something to keep me busy. I was like, well, if I'm going to do something, let's make, let's make it worth it, you know? So I wanted to build a house. I was like, well, how am I going to build a house if I can't walk? So that was a huge factor too. And then I just made a promise to myself. I, I don't know if it was a gradual thing. I mean, I know it was like a lifelong gradual thing. But right at the beginning of 2015, people have that New Year's mentality of, you know, I'm going to make a change, you know. But New Year's rolled around. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be my project. You know, I'm going to make a promise that from now on, I'm going to try to be healthy. So. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know that if I was going to go the low carb route, because that's what I started off doing in 2015. I was like, well, I'm going to go the low carb route, you know, eat the, eat the bad stuff. <laughs> but, uh, slowly I just started thinking about, well, what do I do? How do I be as healthy as I can be? Cause that was my optimal goal. You know, weight loss was going to be a, you know, a byproduct of it. I wanted to be as healthy as I could be, you know, I don't care what 
the decisions were made. So I started, you know, adding in more smoothies because I saw a lot of infomercials about people drinking smoothies. That's got to be healthy, right? So I started doing uh, more smoothies, throwing in more vegetables. And then uh, around May, I started adding myself to a bunch of groups, Facebook groups. And then uh, a lady sent me a video of uh, a Dr. John McDougal talking about starches, you know, how people can, you know, lose weight eating corn and potatoes and beans. And that's where it all started. I kind of just uh, started doing research on it. And uh, a whole world of stuff happened after that. That's awesome. Yeah, I think you said, um, you know, to quote you in that message that you sent to me, in thinking about yourself as the as the next project, you said, I promise that from this day until the day I die, I will become healthier and be strong enough to build that house, to get the family I want, to be 80 years old, and not have to worry about being in a home or a wheelchair. It was, uh, it was as scared of a promise as I've ever made. So where were you at mentally at that point? I mean, that's, those are, that's a tall task, especially I'm imagining for a guy who's over 500 pounds. Yeah. Well, you know, some, some people think about right now. Some people think about five years. I was thinking about down the road, man. You know, I was thinking about when I was 70, 80, 90. I didn't want to be a person with Alzheimer's. I didn't want to be that person who was super unhealthy or uh, have a list of diseases. But I know a lot of people at that age are really active and really healthy. I was like, that's pretty admirable. I want to be like that, you know? So I was like, well, why would I wait till I'm 50 to start doing that? I'm going to start right now. So that was huge. And, and whenever I started making this promise, you know, it was like, it wasn't like I'm going to try to be healthier. It's like, no, I promise with everything that I am, I'm going to be healthier than anybody I know, you know, I don't care what it takes. I don't care how long it takes. I don't have, you know, I wasn't trying to lose weight within like a 30 day period. It was like, this wasn't a three month period. It was like, I don't care if it takes five, 10, 20 years. I'm on a path of being super healthy. And I don't know that, that promise to myself, I think was probably the key to it all because you have to love yourself enough to make a promise like that. And that's something I've probably never really did before is, is really love myself enough to care about myself, you know? Well, that's powerful stuff. Um, so did you tell people like, were you, you know, kind of letting people know, or was that something you just kept to yourself? I didn't say anything to anybody, man. I was just, that was between me and myself. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't make a big deal out of it. I didn't post it out on, on Facebook. I didn't put it out to, to many people. I just knew that I had to do something because I was tired of not being able to walk, you know? And that's something that I really didn't really want to make public, you know? People didn't even know that I was that overweight. I was so... I was like a hermit for a long time because you don't go out of the house too much when you're that big or, you know, when you can't walk, you really can't go out of the house. So, yeah, well, you've come a long way from being a hermit, not going to your house to, yes. uh, to running and to chatting with uh, people online about your journey. Um, yeah. so you talked about, uh, a story about how you basically spent a long time not getting on the scale after, uh, I think, I think it was in May. Um, can you share that story? Yeah, I, uh, at the beginning of 2015, I made that, that promise to myself and I didn't care what it took to lose the weight. And I was on the low carb diet, eating smoothies. And then after May, I, uh, I started the plant-based lifestyle, which I saw so many success stories and I just, for some reason I knew it was going to work. It just made sense to me, all the science behind it, the research. And I never want, I wanted to do everything opposite of what I did in the past. Because every time in the past, I'd either tried to win a weight loss competition or I would always weigh myself every week. Everything that I used to do that didn't work, 
I wasn't going to do that because obviously it didn't work. So I tried to do something different and I never stepped on the scale. I just wanted to do it the best I can. And I just kept on noticing myself getting smaller. I, I noticed myself feeling better. I noticed that I can move around more. My clothes were getting bigger. And I think it was sometime in, I don't know, October, November. I don't know. It was like eight, nine months after starting all this. I stepped on the scale and I knew that I was over 500 pounds. I didn't know exactly where I was. But the last time I weighed myself way, way earlier, 2014 or something, it was at 491. But I knew I gained way more than that. I knew it was way over 500 pounds. But I stepped on the scale and it said 365, I think it was. And I was like, I ain't stepped on the scale in three years. This got to be broke. You know, this doesn't work. So I woke my brother up. He was in bed. I woke him up. I said, hey, y you have to step on this scale because this isn't right. This don't make sense. He stepped on it. He's like, yeah, it's right. I'm like, what? <laughs> I lost 135 pounds. Like, that's that's a cool little thing to happen, you know. And that right there was a that was a boost. That just said, you know what, this is working and my project's going good. <laughs> Yeah, there's certainly uh, there's certainly no denying uh, that it's working to say the least. Um, yeah. So I know that your your lymphedema, I believe, is what's called, yeah. is gone. Uh, your yeah. other um, you know physical or medical ailments that you had are gone. Any yeah. surprises or things that have kind of happened, or any ways in which life has changed that surprised you during this process? Yeah, um, my movement. Man, I, like in high school, you know, you're younger, you're a little bit healthier because you're younger. Um, you know, kids would run track and stuff. And, you know, I think the farthest I ever ran was a half mile. And that was like impossible to me. You know, I, I ran half a mile at a, you know, I was a big kid and I was like, well, that's, that's amazing. But recently, you know, I'm running a mile without stopping, you know, just yesterday I ran 1.3 miles without stopping and I could have ran more, you know? So my physical ability going from not being able to walk to running over a mile almost effortlessly surprised the hell out of me, man. You know, it's, it's cool. And what really surprises me, I think is that I enjoy it. Used to exercise used to be something like, Oh, I got to exercise. But now it's like, I can't wait to go run, you know, because it feels it makes you feel grateful for where you were, you know. So that's one of the biggest things, I think. That's awesome. So I know you're I know you're obviously in it for the for the long haul. You've got the long game in mind. Where do you see yourself, whether it's physically um, uh, or life? Like, what are your goals for the next year, five years, 10 years? I think immediately, I think my goal is just to keep on doing what I'm doing. I want to get healthier, cleaner, stronger, faster. Um, I'm lifting more, so I'm trying to get my muscles toned up because I got a lot of skin to fill in, you know? So that's a huge thing for me. Running, I think, is probably number one just because I like the way it makes me feel. I like the effects of it. It's cool. Um, in September, late September, I plan on running a 5k. Um, next year, my main goal is to run the half marathon, 13.1 miles up at Leadville, Colorado, hopefully with you and Lajani and Kaufman. That's, that's just surreal to me just to think about it, but it's not impossible to me now. And that's, what's cool. It's like, it's a game, you know, it's like I got to reach level 13 or whatever, you know. So that's that's my next year's goal. And then after that, I just want to keep on getting better. You know, I want to get healthy and faster. And more abilities, man, I'd like to take that half marathon, go up to a full marathon, do triathlons, whatever, you know, just something to test myself. Yeah, well, as as a. Uh... I was also having a conversation with Josh and something that occurred to me, I said to him was if the last, you know, however long, let's say year, year and a half has been, any, been any indication 
of what is uh, what was formerly impossible but now possible, then it seems yeah. like the future is uh, is limitless for you. And uh, I should also say that just to warn you, the uh, the Leadville is fifteen point five miles, which oh. I did not fully realize uh, when I hey, signed up cool. for it. But hey, what's another few extra, right? Hey, that's um, fun. So uh, <laughs> so let me ask you this: if 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 you could have a conversation with someone who's at the beginning of this journey, who is at you know their heaviest, who maybe the future seems insurmountable, seems like you know it's just too hard ahead. They have maybe failed in the past. What advice would you give someone at the start of that journey? I think number one, number one key is you got to love yourself, man. It's it's like if you have something you hold dear, like, you know, some people might have a fancy sports car, you know, like a classic car. Are they going to drive it into the wall? Are they going to put, you know, sugar in the gas tank? You know, are they just going to treat it like a piece of junk or are they going to treat it like what it is? You know, you got to treat your body like a vessel of the utmost respect, you know, and this is the only thing we have until we die. You know, we got to we got to treat it good or else you're going to be on crutches. You're going to be sick. You're going to have a disease, you know. So, <laughs> so I think I think maybe. That's that's a key. You know, you got to treat yourself the best you can. But uh, people got to stop putting junk in their body. You, you got to quit eating the the stuff that makes you sick. You know, the fast food, the sodas, the drugs. You know, I actually I've been thinking about how to, like, explain my whole whole journey in like a, a small little package, you know, a good analogy. I should have wrote this on the message I sent to you because it's kind of cool the way I thought of it. But I kind of think of my journey like being in this dungeonous maze, right? And I was at the beginning. It was dark. I couldn't see anything. But even if I could see anything, I was chained down. You know, I had these chains on my, my hands, my arms, my, my chest, my legs. And if you want out of that situation, if you want to get out of your health situation, well, first you need to be able to see, and then you got to get all those chains off, and then you have to limp your way out of the maze. Well, for me, the light was the knowledge, you know, the the, the knowledge of the plant-based lifestyle, how how it helps heal diseases and how people can lose weight and be more energetic and get rid of depression. So right there, there's the knowledge. And the chains were the addictions, really. It was the the animal products, the processed foods, the cigarettes, the alcohol, the drugs. The So if you can systematically start getting these chains off of you, you're free. You don't need these things that elevate your chemical levels to make you feel good all the time. You need to lower that bar of pleasure. You know, you don't have to always be on those roller coasters of life. You don't always have to eat the cheeseburgers. You don't always have to be doing the drugs, drinking the alcohol. Lower it down to be at a normal level and be comfortable with reality. So with the light on and the chains gone, you can start limping your way out of that maze. And then after limping, you start walking and then you start running. Then you're on your way out. And then life isn't a dungeon anymore. It's like this. Like you said, there's infinite possibilities later on, you know? So, yeah, I, I could go into that all day long, but <laughs> that's the gist of it. Well, I think uh, for me, the main two takeaways from that were, you know, love yourself, take care of yourself as if it's the only sports car you've got. And then, yeah. and then secondly, it sounds like you truly are a free man now. So if you could go yeah. back, uh, you know, pre-2015 – and have a conversation with yourself and tell something to yourself that you think maybe would have resonated. What would you, what would you have said? What would that conversation have been like? Man, I think I would have forewarned myself about stop trying to go on that low carb diet over and over and over and over again, because it never worked for me. Uh, it doesn't give me the energy like, plants do like the carbs do and without the energy you can't get up and move you, you, you can't run 
Um, but if I were to go back and tell myself something, I would I would try to convince myself to just not put junk in my body and learn more about what is junk and what isn't junk. Because a lot of people think that a lot of healthy stuff is healthy and it's not. You know, a lot of stuff on TV, people like eat this and lose weight. That's bad information, you know. So but that's. People can argue about that stuff all day because. People think that, you know, certain foods are good, but. A lot of doctors would argue otherwise, but. I think loving yourself and uh, learning about health and. uh Wanting to change, I think that's a big thing. But I would tell myself uh, probably what helped the most is probably the plant-based lifestyle. I don't know how to put that into shorter words, but but uh, eat plants, move your body, drink water, stop all the addictions, you know. And I know that's hard for people. That was hard for me to realize. Hey, you need to quit smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, doing drugs, eating fast food. You just got to want to be better. And I think that's what I tell myself. Awesome. Well, um, in your message, you said this to me, and I think it's a great place to wrap up. And these are your words. The last week or so, I weighed myself at 297. Life is beyond beautiful now. I'm not sick. I don't lack energy. I'm meeting amazing people all over the world online. That promise I made, I've been keeping it. I was deep in that hole, man. I'm getting out with flying colors now. I feel free from the self-made prison I needlessly made for myself, which I think is absolutely beautiful. Um, And uh, maybe where can people connect with you? Um, They can find me on Facebook, um, Justin Lacey. Um, I think my username is actually jlacey03, I think. Um, Pretty much that's it for now. I think, uh, yeah, that's about it. I uh, I don't have a website or anything just yet. I'm not too too famous or nothing. I uh, I used to have a bunch of stuff on YouTube, but I think it's all deleted now. I used to perform. I I still perform every once in a while. I'm a musician, so uh, I used to have some music out there, but uh, I don't think I get think it got deleted. So okay, well, I'll include a link to your Facebook. And uh, Justin, thanks for uh, the time. You're an inspiration to say the least, and uh, I can't wait to hear your results when you jump back on the scale in another six to eight months. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, and more than anything, uh, well, not more than anything, but in addition to all that, I will look forward to seeing you at the starting line at Leadville next year. Absolutely, man. All right. Well, have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.